Okay, guys. Um, so I'm John Leung. So I'm uh, the um, uh, project lead for the OCP workstream profile, which we actually just started this year. I'm also on the OCP steering committee, and I represent them through the hardware management uh, project. Um, in addition, I'm a principal engineer at, at Intel, and my, my last title is I'm uh, the representative to the DMTF, which owns the Redfish um, uh, interface. So you, you've seen me speaking a lot about that. So uh, the Redfish and, and interop profile. So um, OCP has uh, specified Redfish as the uh, manageability interface for, for their platforms. Um, uh, I'll be talking about how far we've gotten along. But um, in, in specifying it, you can write a whole bunch of requirements. Um, the problem is uh, requirements exist in documents, and documents are hard to read. Um, so uh, Redfish actually created the concept of, of profiles. Uh, profiles are JSON formatted files, and uh, they can be used to auto-generate tests and test a conformant implementation. So, um, so you, you well, well, the organization we have between um, DMTF and OCP is the DMTF is a, what I call a descriptor standards body. They describe standards, and their job is to extend Redfish into as many management domains as they possibly can, uh, from um, the data center proper of, of, of data to the edge of the data center with uh, DSIM to other, other areas of, of manageability that can occur. So um, out of that, we've um, actually, um, within DMTF, actually created uh, alliance partnerships with other organizations that specialize in other management domains. Um, OCP is specializes in data centers, both uh, uh, the edge of, of the data center of cooling and power or the actual compute. Um, we have a, uh, a relationship with the Open Group uh, for OPATH, and they do process automation, which is uh, automated factories. So um, they adopted Redfish about four or five years ago. Um, they've been pushing this out into the uh, uh, process automation industry, uh, and they have uh, at least three profiles because they split the profiles to manage hardware, uh, to manage uh, the operating systems and stuff that run on, on top of it. So uh, they've been very active in, in uh, pushing Redfish in that domain, and they've actually used, utilized the entire profile uh, mechanism to um, um, get the uh, implementations in line. And, and what, when we had our discussion with, with OPATH, it was, oh, we have this great thing called profiles, it'll do most of your testing for you, and they said, yeah, we took a look at it, John, but you see, um, automated factories are the lifeblood of a company, and your tests are good, but not good enough for us, so we have to go re-implement on top of it um, stuff that cannot fail because you cannot shut off the manufacturing floor. Um, uh, Open Infra, uh, we've had a relationship where uh, they have uh, OpenStack, and so they've written a profile of, if you want to snap into OpenStack, you need to conform to this uh, um, uh, OpenStack profile, uh, which they, they publish. Uh, we're in talks with uh, uh, Starling X, which is the, doing their edge uh, um, uh, implementations and, and uh, trying to start up a, a profile so that if you meet these uh, requirements for manageability, you can snap up to, to Starling X at the, at the edge. So um, in addition, uh, Target, I think, joined uh, OCP about uh, last year and started looking at profiles, and they actually did a, a, a session um, on their um, uh, meetup uh, series about profiles and, and how, one, profiles work, and they should start utilizing these in inter enterprise. And so they're, they're interested in trying to do a, a profile for an enterprise data center. Um, so this slide just says uh, exactly what you do with a profile. So uh, profiles are, are written in JSON. Um, the, um, uh, the DMTF has implemented a refresh uh, a validator, an interrupt validator, which actually consumes the profile, um, auto-generates the test, and then runs it against a conformant implementation. So, um, and then just issues you a pass-fail. So this is part of, this is all in open source that, uh, that DMTF owns. If you, if you look at the OCP um, uh, profile uh, website, it actually uh, names all three 
uh, validators that are implemented for Redfish. One is to interrupt, just to make sure that you have all the uh, resources and properties that um, OCP requires, but there's also one for to validate the protocol and validate all the services that need to be required. So by running all three, you are basically fully conformant to, to the Redfish standard. So, um, so one, one thing issue about profile is that it's written in JSON, which means first you have to under, understand JSON, and then there's a semantic we put on top of, of JSON called the profile semantic. Um, most people don't want to know this, um, especially as we talk to, go to other organizations like the server project and the networking project, uh, we cannot show them a JSON profile. Uh, they'll walk out of the room. Um, so what we've done is we've uh, created another manifestation of a profile, which I call user's guide. And the user's guide is, is basically a Word document, uh, which you can read. Uh, and they can go assess, and uh, that's what we bring to other projects because then they can ha we can have a cognitive discussion about what we're interested in, which are what use cases are you interested in, and once we agree upon that, then the hardware management project can convert that, that discussion um, and, and user's guide into a set of profiles. So the next slide is exactly what a profile looks like. Um, so uh, it basically has a table of use cases, and then each case, use case points down to um, a set of, of uh, uh, interactions. So in this case is uh, get the status of a chassis. Um, you issue a get request because uh, Redfish is RESTful. Um, so this is a standard RESTful request. This is a fragment of the response you get back. It has a structure called status. It has two properties within it. Uh, uh, from that, a, anyone not skilled in the art of writing a profile can understand exactly what we're trying to do within Redfish. And they, they can uh, comment about whether that is sufficient information for, for a status um, and provide us feedback on it. So um, once that's done, so we go through the entire use case uh, uh, table that way. And then at the very top of the, of the uh, usage document, it says that this use case is reflected and correlated to a profile. And it will actually list the profile, and that profile is in the OCP GitHub. So there's a one-to-one -one correlation. As, as soon as the user's guide is the one that gets contributed to OCP, it's the one gets to, gets approved by the steering committee. Once it gets approved, the um, profile gets elevated to release status and can, now can be, be uh, accessed by the, by the general community. So, um, so users guys and profile changes. So what we have so far is uh, uh, everything is on our GitHub. Uh, so we use the entire GitHub process. So if you run a profile, you run into a problem, you can file a GitHub issue. Uh, we week on, meet on a, uh, a monthly basis to go through these issues, uh, sign uh, corrections. It can be, it can end up to be something that needs to be changed in the usage guide. It can be uh, something that needs to be changed in the verifier itself. So because these things are, are interface definitions, we have a very strict uh, uh, revision control uh, mechanism so that the way we name revisions, you can understand what the, what the backward compatibility of these are. So uh, right now, uh, all the profiles are at 1.0. That means we can do a dot rev to 1.1, 1.2, 1.3. You should not have to change any of your client code to, to, to run this, right? It should just run. Um, if you want to take uh, advantage of new features, uh, that are, are available in 1.1, which are not in 1.0. You may have to add code, but if you don't want to add, uh, use any of the new features, you don't have to add code, okay? And then a dot dot rev is basically, you should not have to change anything. This was an errata change. Someone found a typo, we fixed it, we shipped it out. It has no functional change to, this, to the system. And this is the discipline we got from the DMTF where, who specializes in standardization of interfaces, and we know the, the primary uh, uh, value is that uh, we not change, force the infrastructure that uses the interface to change every time we roll, roll revision. So uh, backward 
compatibility is a very important discipline within the way we do uh, blood pressure profiles. So um, in that vein, uh, we've taken the baseline profile, which I'll talk about in the next slide, from 1.0 to 1.1, uh, recently released, and the OpenRMC, which is the Rack Manager interface, uh, talked about uh, I think in the first slide uh, we're, we're, we're taking to we've just taken to to one dot one okay so I've talked about users guides so uh, users guides are uh, we, we started writing them in Word we decided to abandon Word we went to GitHub uh, it's fully now in markup markdown so um, if you find a a textual problem with within a, a usage guide, we can uh, you go through we go through the same process to fix it. Uh, submit an issue, we assign it, we, we generate a pull request, and we can go fix it. Uh, part of, of of requiring to do that, oh, uh, we use uh, the Markdown GitHub flavor Markdown, of course, uh, since we're part of, of GitHub. Uh, part of what we're doing here is is in order to do this, we actually have a publishing tool. Um, that we utilize that once we have the markdown uh, 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 the way we want it, uh, we can generate, uh, we can push it through the uh, uh, document generation tool and it will uh, um, uh, publish both the PDF um, and, and the HTML. And the PDF is what gets um, uh, moved up and shown in the, in the contribution portal. And this is something that uh, the rest of uh, OCP is evaluating as a tool chain so that they can move some of the other documentation, which are all across um, OCP, uh, into, into Markdown. Uh, we started doing, doing this because um, uh, it's so very common in DMTF to do this for profiles. And um, uh, my, my goal is to expand it beyond, within the hardware management project proper before I go on to other projects and tell them that you should go do this too. So uh, hopefully with the move of OCP toward a more GitHub process, uh, a more disciplined process, we can get this going. Okay, so uh, within OCP, uh, we've had the baseline for quite a while. The baseline is baseline manageability across all OCP platforms. And um, uh, uh, most people don't see profiles unless you contribute a product. Uh, if you contribute a product into the marketplace, uh, one of the requirements is that it, it uh, adhere to a, to a profile. So uh, most of them have baseline because the way we constructed this was baseline was common manageability. Every platform can extend above it. So if you're a storage platform and you have disk drives, you can add re uh, additional requirements that disk drives need to be uh, modeled within your manageability. Uh, we did servers, servers exist. Uh, the server profile exists, and it's uh, CPUs, uh, so on and so forth. Um, and then, um, uh, as I mentioned, there's, there's uh, Rack Manager, which is how do I manage above, above uh, up groups of nodes that all support Redfish. Okay. So the uh, presentation during Global Summit for uh, this uh, Rack Management profile, which will occur uh, in about an hour, um, and then the liquid cooling profile uh, will occur tomorrow at the uh, uh, cooling environments. So it's occurring in the cooling environments because, uh, again, another aspect of profiles is that, as I mentioned, we are not the sm sm subject matter experts on it, most of this stuff. They are. The other projects are. So when the uh, cooling environments project expressed interest in doing a profile, we ran over there. <laughs> and we said, you guys are the SMEs. We understand uh, manageability. We will help you every step of the way to get this to, to a profile stage. So um, they basically are in, in the process of, they, they uh, helped us define and, and finalize the Redfish models to support what they need. And now they're going through and setting the requirements of which of these resources need to occur, which of the properties need to occur, um, and which of the values of properties need to occur. So, so that, that will be sometime to, uh, tomorrow afternoon. Um, also, there are two new profiles which are, which are occurring. So I've, in the uh, diagram on the top, the, the, the system level profiles or platform level profiles, what we're finding is people contributing our component level profiles is that I don't want to define profile all of it. 
I have a specific component I want managed uh, uh, via Redfish. How do I do that? So we now have a concept of component level profiles uh, in the two, uh, the one what that we have is, is the PowerShell. So it, we're not managing the entire rack yet, but we have a profile that's needed to manage just the PowerShell portion of that profile, which will, will, will snap into something larger as soon as we figure out what the platform profile looks like. Uh, we also have uh, uh, Ethernet switch profile, which is if you're a switch and within networking, um, you can, um, there are some basic things you need to be able to do to an Ethernet switch. Um, and so we're starting at the fundamental uh, lowest layer of an Ethernet switch and say, we got it, we, I think we can get general agreement that everyone needs to go do this, and then from there we can extend, extend topwards. Um, so I've, I've, I've mentioned most of this. This is the liquid cooling profile that we um, uh, are going to talk about tomorrow. Uh, we lease, released the actual models themselves um, earlier this year, and that allowed uh, the OCP uh, 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 liquid uh, hardware management for liquid cooling to actually be in discussion. So we're very working in kind of tandem with them that they help us release the profile, work on the profile, uh, we release it, and then it's open now for public consumption and, and general discussion within OCP. So um, we try to be as open as possible and get things out into the industry to, so they can be commented on. Um, okay, so the next two slides are just the use cases. So this is the only thing that we would bring to the other projects is go have a discussion about this, have a discussion about the interactions that would occur in order to fulfill these profiles, and they can tell us whether it's sufficient, uh, whether they need more use cases, so on and so forth. So this is the internet switch. As I told you, it's fairly, it's fairly general, right? Uh, uh, the functional switch elements uh, give you a list of switches. Um, uh, Redfish doesn't support just one node. It supports a multitude of nodes across the, across the data center. Uh, information on the switch, status, uh, physical uh, context of the, of the switch itself, uh, the chassis, um, um, information about the chassis, uh, switches as modules, modules of ports, ports have as Ethernet interfaces. Fairly simple. Um, so that's basically um, how you cascade down the structure to, to get you what you want. Each one of these will return information about uh, the modules, the ports, the Ethernets. Um, um, Ethernets, of course, support uh, 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 V4 and V6 uh, information. Okay? And then um, as, a, as a baseline on almost all uh, uh, resources, they, they, if they have a system log, um, then you want to be able to fetch the system log. And we think this is minimal. So if you think something has to be added to this minimum, come talk, have the discussion. Um, we have not actually uh, approached the uh, networking project yet. I bro broached it with them when I met them this, this week, and they're eager to have this discussion for us to bring this in um, because they're, they'd very much like to get into the uh, um, manageability side of, of, of networking. The PowerShell. Uh, so this is the uh, you know, bottom, top of, of the rack where, where, power, uh, where power comes in. Uh, this is our, 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 our uh, initial uh, estimate on, on what that component profile would be. Um, so we have both a, uh, a physical aspect of, of uh, resources and a functional aspect. So the physical aspect is, is the sheet metal uh, and everything involving the sheet metal um, and, and parts and the functional aspect of, well, this piece of sheet metal is a power supply. <laughs> so therefore, there are specific uh, attributes and, and, and properties of, of that power supply. Okay, and so that leads me to the call of action is that, uh, well, uh, the, um, attend the rack manager session, stay in your seats uh, for us to talk about that. Uh, attend the uh, session next week if you're interested in, in liquid cooling. Uh, provide feedback. Um, and now, now that we have everything on the GitHub, um, it's fairly easy to file issues against the usage guide or, or the profiles as you get them. Uh, and then test your products in accordance, especially if it's going to become a product. With that, I think I have one minute. Yeah, five minutes. Yeah.
Uh, any effort so far that you come across for accelerator uh, profiles? Oh, uh, actually, yes, yes. So um, as when, when Drew was up here, uh, he talked about uh, GPU manage manageability. Uh, so the GPU has actually a uh, group. Um, we, what reason why we formed them is they own three documents. They own GPU management, they own phone update of GPUs, and they own GPU RAS. All three of them specify Redfish interface. Right, um, uh, but okay, so it's the same compliance. It will be the same compliance, okay. and one of the reasons uh, they wanted to join the group was they wanted to start to, uh, figuring out how to write the user's guides to, to start driving this. Okay, I'll talk to you again. Okay. For the publishing guide, is that uh, something open source, or the usage guide that has the publishing tools, are those open source? That's an interesting position. So. Um, the, uh, the publishing tools uh, are, um, are owned by the DMTF. Um, they have made them available to all the alliance partners. So all the alliance partners, that's why I went to OCP and I said, we got these tools, want to use them. Uh, they're evaluating. Uh, they've taken uh, more than three months and they haven't gotten an answer back. So, so I went and I said, fine. You can figure out, if you're figuring out using this publishing tool or someone else's, I don't care. As long as I start with Markdown and I end with a PDF and HTML. So you guys go through whatever process you guys need to go figure it out. I'm going to start with Markdown. And I'll plug in whatever you guys have <laughs> when you guys decide what that is. Uh, but for now, uh, it's, it's uh, Alliance Partners and, and I think only the project leads where I have access to them because they're part of the, of the foundation. But uh, um, the ultimate goal is uh, there's no particular reason that these cannot be open source. Uh, but the DMTF is very wary about making anything public source, which will get a lot of, of, of interaction and pulls from it and possibly bugs piled against it. So the alliance partners and at DMTF, I'm VP of alliances, so I form all the alliances, is that we will use the alliances to do a soft open <laughs> on these tools to make sure we fix any bugs that we need to uh, before we give it general availability and make it true to open source. Maybe follow up then, if you, um, excluding the specific software, would you consider updating the interop profile spec to add Markdown as a more well-defined user-friendly method for creating profiles? Um, that is, um, I would say it is because um, this is the only way I could get the other projects to pay attention. You walk in with a profile, they don't want to talk to you, right? You walk in with a user's document that they can actually consume and, and respond to uh, and is in a format that they understand, they will give you feedback as fast as you can take it, right? So um, uh, it's necessary because of the type of community that OCP is, it's got a bunch of SMEs, right, that understand stuff that, that uh, need feedback on. Um, is it something that, that DMTF wants to, wants to know about? Possibly not, right? They might say, that's great because you, that's good for the community you're working in, right? But within DMTF, it may not be, right? And so who writes profiles, right? Um, what I've said is that uh, a DMTF is a, is a descriptive body it describes, goes into as many details as they want. Uh, we need prescriptive bodies to actually make the requirements, right? They're the only ones people listen to. OCP has OCP accepted and OCP inspired. People listen to that, right? And if, if, we, if an RFP says, it says you shall have be OCP accepted, OCP accepted says you shall comply, comply to the baseline profile, we're, we're done, right? Uh, I mentioned um, OPAP earlier on, who does process automation. They did profiles by themselves. They say, hey, profiles aren't that difficult. We understand JSON. They wrote it all. They don't. They have no interest in ever using a user's guide. So it's really, really up to the nature of the uh, prescriptive power on whether um, there are a community. Lots of people, they need to understand this. Or uh, OPAF, which is a small steering group, which says, yes, the five of us can go figure out what a profile is and have one person go write it. Right. So. 
got it. Yeah. Next. Yeah. John, just one thing to add, just one thing to add on that. That uh, so the, the the publication tool that that John's talking about is really just the conversion from Markdown to HTML and PDF. Yeah. Yeah. And there's there's commercial software involved in that in those scripts, and uh, it's finicky. So that's the that's the 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 constraints there. Uh, in terms of taking a profile document and making a usage guide, uh, there is an open source tool from the DMTF called the Documentation Generator, and it has a mode that will consume both the schema files uh, and the uh, profile document, and will create a, you know, a, effectively a requirement stock uh, that looks like the other uh, schema guides that, that DMTF publishes for Redfish. Uh, that will not be sufficient for explaining a usage guide, but it can provide you effectively, and I just, I'm doing this right now for, uh, for one of my profiles I'm trying to finish. Uh, so it will produce you basically the reference guide of like here are the resources and the properties and the requirements, all the stuff that comes out of the profile, and then you just start adding your usage guide uh, you know, at the, as, as front material that get merged in as part of that tool. So that part of the tool chain is, is freely available and, and it's open source. Uh, and that'll produce a markdown. Uh, I think at the end of the day, if you produce a markdown usage guide and a JSON profile document and send it to, and put it into the GitHub or contribute to the to OCP, one of the leads will go take that and run it through the publication tool. But everyone can already read the, the markdown. It's just not in that final format for, uh, you know, consumption by, you know, by, by everyone. So the, the tooling, there's lots of tooling there don't get, let's not get too hung up on that last little bit if we, you know, it, it, this is not like we're doing hundreds of profiles, so uh, I, I think all of us project leads will be more than happy to, to run that run that to completion for that last little, that last little bit. Okay. Makes sense, thanks. I'll stop by the booth, we can chat more about this after. Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, let, let's thank John. Uh,